Hello everybody, welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. We've got lots to go at uh, this week. There's some very good racing on Racing TV over the last seven days. We'll go to Salisbury midweek and then it'll be Redcar and Newmarket thereafter. There's four two-year-olds to look at uh, this time of year. We are a little bit uh, two-year-old heavy on The Verdict. So looking ahead to what might happen next year and looking to the future with the youngsters. But we've also got uh, the big Group 1 race from Newmarket for fillies and mares that was the Sun Chariot. That comes up a little bit later in the show, but we start at Salisbury on Thursday afternoon. The winners on that day were interesting for it was a day dominated by Rafe Beckett. He had the first three winners on the card. They were all two-year-olds, Blue Stocking, if not now, and Remar Key, and just one favourite uh, went in throughout the afternoon. That was a bolt action in the 344. But it's one of the two-year-olds that Rafe Beckett trained that I want to have a look at, and I think was the most impressive of his treble, it was Remar Key, who landed the 234, Division 1 of the Novice Stakes, over just shy of seven furlongs. Bresson was the odds-on favourite, and 5-1 to one Remar Key. Shaden was 13-2, to two, quite well supported for the Marcus Tregoning team. Money for Walk the Moon as well, 8s from 12s, and likewise for Strike Alliance. So the market telling us that this perhaps might be quite a strong Novice Stakes. And I think we see a very good winner in the shape of Remar Key here, who jumped out of stall number seven. Uh, second was Bresson from stall four. Bresson coming here on the back of quite an impressive success at Yarmouth and uh, was wearing cheap pieces for the first time on this particular occasion. Shaden came from stall 10. Uh, Racing TV tracker will be useful for the verdict uh, this week and that horse that finishes third, I think, is one that you can put in straight away. Here we go, let's see what happened out there at Salisbury. On easy-ish ground, uh, good to soft, I think the times really were telling us uh, the ground was and it was Bresson who was keen to get on with things perhaps a bit too keen out in front here you can see just doing a little bit much jockey can't get his hands down on the horses with us pulling a little bit hard sees where's a cross nose band this horse has got plenty of plenty of speed and perhaps fired up a little bit by the first time cheek pieces the winner is in the green colors just tracking the pace just in behind always traveled well through this contest there we go uh, Remar Key travelling really strongly under Rob Hornby. Shaden is just to the outside and at this point of the race I'm marking Shaden up. This is a newcomer who got no cover. Now Shaden will get a little bit of cover later on in the piece but for now was marooned on the outside of the field and I think he's run a, a really solid race in third place. Watch what this horse is able to achieve in the closing stages but just a bit keen out wide in the Shadwell colours at this stage. Bresson has taken the advantage against the rail at Salisbury, which is often an advantage, and is taking them along at a reasonable pace. The finishing speed percentage detailed by the course track sectionals as being 104.03. And this tells us that this horse on the outside, the winner, has come home just over 4% quicker in the final three furlongs than in the previous part of the race. So picked up and quickened really well noticeably so inside the final furlong more of that in a moment they are now winding the pace up as they get to the fifth and sixth furlong and the winner's quite impressive through the sixth furlong 11.89 through the sixth furlong for remarque was much quicker than all of the rivals look she's green she's putting her head to one side she's putting it in the air even whereas bresson looks more straightforward but bresson had gone keenly in the early stages of the race and will be run down as remarque displays a pretty smart turn of foot. Here she goes now, she's getting the hang of things, and Rob Hornby now asks her to pick up, and away she goes. And whereas maybe a narrow win by a head or something looked likely a furlong out, from 50 yards out, she's gone on to win by just about a length in the end, ears pricked. It was an impressive turn of foot. The fifth furlong, 11.97, and the sixth, as I detailed, 11.89. She's picked up in grand style amidst greenness and run on really well all the way to the line. What of her pedigree? What does it tell us about the future for her? Well, the dam side of the pedigree has got a fair bit of stamina in it. Uh, the dam was by Champs-Elysées and Champs-Elysées uh, imparts plenty of stamina 
on the progeny, but she's pretty quick and I think she'll stay a mile and a quarter. That would be for sure. Remember, this is over seven furlongs. She'd get a mile now. And I think she's just about pattern class. I think she's pretty useful. This is a very taking debut performance. Remembering that Bresson, who's being overhauled now, is rated 90 and won well at Yarmouth his previous start. And uh, that horse would be very interesting if um, running perhaps in a nursery off that sort of mark. But down in trip perhaps is the key for Bresson. Perhaps six furlongs would be much better for him. As for this horse, Remarque, already in my opinion, pattern class and very useful. It was Redcar's uh, big day of the year, two-year-old uh, trophy day, and uh, they also had the Gisborough Stakes as well. Uh, these are the winners from the day. Lady Mojito can't stop now. I'm a gambler in the Gisborough. We'll have a look at him a little bit uh, later on. A cold case as well, who won the two-year-old trophy. Belhaven, Kalahari, Prince Zimmerman, Helvetik, responding to first-time headgear in grand style to win the last. Another winner for Rafe Beckett, who's going great guns uh, at the moment. But I'm going to start right at the top. The first of three races we'll look at from Redcar uh, with Lady Mojito who won the 136 contest in really good style. This is how they bet for this uh, novice stakes. Um, seven furlongs the trip, Ararat the favourite, 15 to eight. Lady Mojito, 11 to four, and backed. 11 to two, Sir Jock Bennett, tip town, 11 to two, sevens, and bigger the rest. Now this is an interesting race to have a close look at, I think. Lady Mojito is the winner towards the far side, stall one for Lady Mojito, beating Maltese Falcon, a newcomer, right out there in 13 and design from stall four was in third place now my initial take after this race was lady mojito grabbed the far rail and rode the better ground to success you can see if you look at the ground it's somewhat compacted by vehicles that go down that side of the track you can see the tire tracks almost in the ground and it is somewhat compacted and therefore it can ride a little bit quicker than the rest of the track. Now there is no doubt that Lady Mojito took full advantage of that, grabbing that ground and racing up against the rail throughout the contest. But if you look at the course track sectionals, her success cannot just be put down to racing on a better strip of ground than her rivals. And also if you look at the other results on the card throughout the day, winners did come from off the rail. So we don't want to water down this success too much by saying, well, look, she's bolted up because she rode the rail. It definitely helped, but I think she's got a ton of ability. The early pace was strong. She was part of that early pace. Second furlong, 11.29. Third furlong, 11.57. Fourth furlong, again, another 11.57. They did not hang about out there, and the finishing speed percentage of 100.87 tells us all we need to know that this was quite a strongly run two-year-old race where they got tired in the closing stages but the winner was able to fire five sub 12 second furlongs and that is the fact that tells us that it wasn't just the rail that took her to success she wasn't riding a train against the rail she is pretty useful firing those sub 12s five of them don't forget on ground with cut in it is an impressive performance from this horse who's clearly improved from debut where in a slowly run race she was very green and able to show her true ability but she's really shown it here she's really flashed it and i put it to you that she would have won even if she'd been out where maltese falcon was somewhere out here now you'll remember maltese falcon was in stall 13 so has got across from out here got all the way across and has finished in second place on debut. So what we can say about Maltese Falcon is this horse has done best of those that raced away from that far rail. And it's quite a good debut performance, I think. And a little race like this will come Maltese Falcon's way and therefore perhaps Racing TV Tracker for Maltese Falcon uh, would be the place to go uh, with her. But I'm going to be very positive about Lady Mojito, who's not quite in shot. She's riding the rail over on the far side. You can see Maltese Falcon coming into contention, going past design, who finishes third. This is all about Lady Mojito. Don't be fooled by this horse riding the good rail, because the sectionals suggest she is pretty useful. Look at her prick in her ears there. Not doing a tap in the closing stages. It was a slow final furlong, according to the sectionals, but she is idling a bit out in front. 
and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see her really step up on this and minor pattern company might be something she could cope with going forward for the Richard Farhi team she's certainly uh, pretty useful there she is coming back into uh, the winners enclosure keep an eye on her and indeed Maltese Falcon who was second Uh, we stay at Redcar to have a look at the list of Gisborough stakes. Seven furlongs was the trip at 2.47 on Saturday afternoon in Dubai Poet, the 13-8 to favourite, and pretty well backed, despite the fact that he's uh, been stringing a number of second places uh, to his name. But uh, he was fancied to win this over seven. I'm a gambler, 4-1. to one. Rhythm Master, 13-2. to 13-2, Kanjar. Sonny Liston, 15-2. Uh, to two. Bit of a talking horse, Sonny Liston. Jump the gun, who was highlighted here on the verdict to win unlucky in the Air Gold Cup, 16-1. to one. Uh, and Almondesar was 16s as well. And it's I'm a Gambler who does the job here. A horse who's had a tremendous season, jumping from stall number six, wins this for the, the Johnston team. Rhythm Master came from stall five in second place. Third home was Dubai Poet, placed again. And Jump the Gun was uh, back in fourth place. I'll talk about him a little bit later. I think he wants to come back to... Uh, six furlongs. I think there's a, a strong handicap in him over uh, six furlongs. Now, the first thing to say about the Gisborough was that it was strongly run. The early sectionals, according to course track, courtesy of Rhythm Master number four, who's just about in front at uh, this stage, well, they were pretty quick. If you look at them individually, second furlong 11.19, third furlong 11.08 and the fourth, 11.15. So they were not hanging about uh, out there. The Rhythm Master taking them along and jumped the gun now, pressing the pace towards the outside. And the finishing speed percentage of the winner, 100.85 for I'm a Gambler, who's in here. He's just sat off this strong pace. He's letting them get on with it out in front. Didn't want any part of the early pace, uh, but he cruises through this contest and wins with a little bit in hand in the closing stages. Here's a big move towards the outside. This horse was last turning in. Dubai Poet, he finishes third in the end. But look at the move he makes. He surges from the back and he surges into contention. And perhaps he did his running a little bit too early in the race. That's his jockey felt that they, they were gonna get away from him. I think he just used up a bit to close the gap. Whereas I'm a gambler now, can just cruise into contention in there and he quickens quite well if you look at uh, the sections he picks up really well six furlong 11.59 seals the deal he puts jump the gun away and indeed uh, rhythm master who rallies quite well to his to his real credit he rallies and gets back up for second place that's a big effort from rhythm master given that early pace but there's the surge from i'm a gambler final furlongs slow 12.7 for the winner getting tired but that surge that took him to the front was enough and those horses around him had just not done things right really rhythm master perhaps gone too quickly early on and got pestered by jump the gun dubai poet perhaps did his running to get into the race and then had nothing left in the closing stages but this horse is admirable uh, this winner he's had six wins so far this season um, mark johnson when interviewed on racing tv afterwards said they weren't going to run here they were going to go to the sales with him on the back of his win at leopardstown last time up but charlie johnson persuaded them to have a go and in he goes and he could go in again because he's at newmarket this friday he's entered in the challenge stakes and uh, knowing the johnson team you won't be surprised if they had a, a crack at that or they might just draw stumps and say well in the back of a couple of successes off to the sales we go and what about dubai poet he's becoming disappointing what's the deal uh, with him well he's been massively impressive in his career he certainly was when he when he won at Newbury, he showed a bright turn of foot to win there. I think he's shown a good turn of foot here to get himself into contention. He just had a bit too much to do. I wonder, he's never raced at six furlongs, ever. He's raced at up to 10 in his career. They're back to seven here for the Gisborough. I wonder if he's got enough pace to have a crack at six furlongs. It might be worth a go. Um, you can argue that he was boxing on in the closing stages here, but I think he's a horse with a, with a load of speed and perhaps a crack at a stiff six would be worth worth a go with Dubai Poet because um, he's certainly not managing to win at the moment over seven and a mile. But there he is. He's a, an admirable racehorse. Uh, I'm a gambler. Typical Mark Johnson type. And he's getting better with his racing as well. If he goes to the sales, I suspect he will fetch a pretty penny for someone. You might see him yet, though, at Newmarket on Friday. 
we remain at Redcar now to have a look at the William Hill two-year-old trophy. A uh, very valuable uh, listed contest over six furlongs. Cold Case had the best form in the race. Uh, he was the 11 to 8 favourite. Funny Story, 6 to 1. 30 to 2, Maria Branwell. Barefoot Angel, 15 to 2. And 10s and bigger the rest. And it was indeed Cold Case who uh, confirmed that he is a very useful type. Uh, he'd run very well in the gym crack at York. And uh, he won a sales race at Doncaster last time up as well. And this is another big pot that he has uh, bagged for the uh, Carl Burke team. Let's send them on the way. We can't really identify the stalls because of the, uh, the camera angle. He's jumped from stall eight. He beats Holguin from 15, Washington Heights from stall seven, and Barefoot Angel from stall 11. Now, remember what I was saying about uh, the first race that we saw from Red Car, where Lady Mojito rode the rail to success. Um, and I, I warned against just describing that performance in the context of the rail. And I think this, this proves the case. Cold Case is racing more towards the middle of the track. Perhaps this horse is just, just much the best. That's probably the case. You get a wide range of ability in, in these sales races. And Cold Case did bring the best form by a mile uh, into the contest. Uh, and he wins pretty comfortably. How was the race run? Really strongly. They didn't hang about out there. They were going very hard in the early part of the race. Furlongs two to four were quick. Course tracks got them as 10.55, 10.96, and 11.19. And those fractions mid-race led to it being something of a slow finish, 12.12 and 12.82, the final couple of furlongs. Cold case here then, gonna go away and win very nicely. Here's Washington Heights, who was always up there, good effort, Holguin, this is the big eye-catcher of the race, was last at halfway and three lengths off the remainder of the pack, but comes home really strongly. The name Barefoot Angel runs on really well, and for me, is crying out for seven furlongs. And he's definitely a horse for your racing TV tracker. Watch Barefoot Angel come home in the closing stages. Cold Case has put this to bed already. Good 11.19 for the fourth furlong. That sealed the deal, really. Just too quick for these horses of uh, modest ability, some of them in behind. And the cold, ace was the cold case was a class act uh, in this race. Um, and that gym crack form that I mentioned, uh, the cold case ran really well in the gym crack. It must surely uh, lead us to think that Noble Style, who won the gym crack in, in, a, in good fashion, must be very useful. It really does seem to frank that form. As far as going forward is concerned for cold case, well, I looked at his pedigree by showcasing out of a dream ahead mare, perhaps sprinting on easy ground will always be his bag uh, going forward um, he was too good here he dominated the mid part of this race that got everything else off the bridle and although he finished slowly he did the damage with those quick sectionals through the fourth and fifth furlong and then he was allowed to just ease down before the line barefoot angel the definite eye catcher whole gwins come from off the pace as well and run uh, pretty well washington heights was always up there and he uh, boxed on pretty well in the closing stages. But Cold Case has had a really good season, a very uh, very good one in terms of earnings. And perhaps we should mention Sheikh Mohammed Abed Al Maktoum. He had a really good uh, weekend. Uh, those uh, yellow colours with uh, the black spots, uh, a tremendous uh, weekend. Different jockeys uh, riding his horses now. And Andrea Seni, of course, doesn't have the retainer uh, with him. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to retain a jockey uh, going forward. But he certainly went well at the weekend with the freelancers that he employed to ride his horses. Cold Case, very easy winner for me of the Redcar two-year-old trophy. Redcar to Newmarket on Saturday, very good card uh, there. Al Husson, a progressive sort, won the opener. Amici took the, the big sales race, the five to two favorite. Uh, Fontaine at 16 to one on the Sun Chariot, the big race of the day. Imperial Emperor, uh, a nice two-year-old. Enfjar, seven to two, took the 252. Another winner for the Johnson team with Madame Ambassador and Pranton. Uh, won the last. We're going to concentrate on Fontaine and Imperial Emperor in this part of the show and we will go to Fontaine's success first in the Sun Chariot. Group 1 for Phillies and Mares at 242 at Newmarket and Saffron Beach last year's winner, 6-4 favourite. Homeless Songs, the Irish uh, 1000 Guineas winner, 5-2. Prosperous Voyage, the Falmouth winner, 6-1. Laurel, 2-2 two from two in her career to date, supplemented for this, 9-1 and Grand Dam 14s. It was uh, 16s from 28s, the winner. Fontaine, so quite nicely supported at Price's Fontaine. Uh, so let's see what uh, happened out there in this uh, Group 1. I think it's a really good race. It was a very good race on paper. There were some disappointing performances. Here's uh, Fontaine and Neil Callan 
on board uh, Fontaine in those Sheikh Mohammed Abed colours. Laurel was second from stall seven. Laurel's horse is featured twice on the verdict already, once after her win at Newmarket and then after the sectionals that she fired when she won at uh, Kempton last time up. She was really impressive there and no surprise they supplemented her for this. And from stall nine, uh, in third place was uh, Grand Dame. First thing to say is I think the rail was a good place to be at Newmarket on Saturday, this uh, stand side rail, and indeed it is where the winner and Grand Dame uh, raced. We'll just pick them out at this this point of the race. Look at the look at the winner, pretty keen under Neil Callan, really pulling quite hard in the early stages of the race. Second horse is Laurel, imposing sort she really is, and she travelled like the best horse in the race. And here's Grand Dame riding. Uh, that rail. This is a good effort from Fontaine because you can see how keen she is. Neil Callan's got hold of her and he's trying to get her to settle but what he manages to do is get her in the end and get her to just drop in behind or just a sort of half a length off Prosperous Voyage with Saffron Beach out wide in those uh, red colours. She's prominent as well and what we had were pretty swift early fractions. Second furlong 11.15, the third furlong 11 dead, and the fourth furlong 11.29. And I think those early fractions perhaps accounted to some extent for the moderate performance of Saffron Beach, who drops right away. There might have been something else amiss, and for Prosperous Voyage as well. And now, importantly, Fontaine has got the rail. There's Laurel just in behind, and there's Grand Dame third. So the first and third riding the rail to success here. Laurel will struggle for a bit of running room for a stride or two. She then picks up really well, looks like she'll win, perhaps lacks for a bit of know-how in the closing stages. But watch how much Fontaine finds. Remember, we highlighted her pulling hard in the early stages. You'd think she'd be out of petrol, but no, aided by racing on a good part of the track, she just keeps finding under pressure applied by uh, Neil Callan and runs on really strongly. Here comes Laurel, extricated by jockey Rab Havlin, and she picks up really well looks like she's going to win and she perhaps just lacked for a bit of know-how her two wins so far have been effortless in slowly run races here in a strongly run race she had to dig a bit deeper and dig she did but just perhaps lacked a bit of well she wasn't perhaps battle hardened enough there was the finishing speed percentage highlighted for you under 100 99.72 telling us just how quickly they went uh, through the race it's a good tussle fontaine really game and tough in winning this and is quite lightly raced so there could be more to come only Fontaine's seventh start so now there might be a little bit more to come she's got a group one in the bag and I'm sure that Laurel's going to be an exciting four-year-old uh, next season of the vanquished we'll pick up the Irish 1000 guineas winner Homeless Songs remember she was really impressive at the Curra when she won there tongue-tie fitted for the first time here after being a bit disappointing in the matron at Leopardstown. And she checked out tamely, having travelled strongly. Saffron Beach, disappointing as well. Last year's winner, who goes very well at this track. She was probably just too close to that strong early pace, although Fontaine wasn't that far off it. So maybe something else was amiss with her. She was a bit uh, disappointing. But the winner was very game and very tough, finding loads in the closing stages for pressure. A delighted Neil Callan on board and Laurel who we suggested was a group one horse when she won uh, novice at Kempton has not disappointed in what was a, a much better race it was a big step up and she made that jump and I fancy that she'll be very useful uh, next season but this was a in a strongly run race this was a game and tough effort from Fontaine who's the Sun Chariot winner well part of the remit for the verdict is to try and identify uh, young horses who are going to go on to much better things and I think I'm able to do that here with Imperial Emperor who won the Mile Maiden at uh, Newmarket on Saturday 13 to 8 favourite a Dublin lad 7 to 2 Lunar Effect back 13 to 2 from 9s 18s a Taj that was a big drifter 25s and bigger uh, the bottom two and it was Imperial Emperor of course who did the business here uh, for uh, Godolphin Charlie Appleby uh, William Buick uh, beautifully bred son of Jubawi, jumping out of stall number four in the Godolphin Blue, so easy to follow through the race. A Taj was in second place, a Dublin lad in stall two, back in third, and perhaps uh, caught the eye somewhat, and think he's perhaps a horse for your uh, racing TV tracker. Um, first thing to say, Leadenhall, who was the second favourite in the race, there in the background, was withdrawn, played up in the stalls, uh, and was withdrawn, so there was a big rule for 25 pence in the pound 
uh, to this race and of course uh, took a little bit of luster away uh, from the contest but nonetheless I think we've seen a very good horse this uh, Jabari Colt making his debut he's a horse with plenty of stamina on the damn side of his pedigree but he has looking at this race clearly got an awful lot of speed Ataj makes the running uh, against that good rail and uh, William Buick happy to just tuck the favourite in there just tracking the speed ready to uh, pick up and um, things pan out nicely for him because that that gap there uh, remains as it is now and he's able to get into it and this horse quickens up in very good state style in the closing stages finishing speed percentage of this race unlike the strongly run races we've looked at so far today in the verdict this was more steadily run 109.26 function of a steady-ish gallop and a function of how quickly this horse surged to the front and ran to the line 9.26 percent quicker in the final three furlongs he ran the rest of the race here he goes now william buick crouching low getting into him as they go into the dip for him to fire a seventh furlong of 11 seconds dead bang he'll do it now from there to the one pole and he's quickening up in great style he's got them all off the bridle they can't go with him that is a sharp turn of foot and now bang from that pole there to the winning line 11.59 so he's backed up an 11 second dead with 11.59 and that has left his rivals toiling in behind he was way too quick for them in that part of the race that was an impressive turn of foot from a horse who's got plenty of stamina on the damn side of the pedigree so this all goes very well for him going forward a horse who's going to stay a mile plus and he's got a potent turn of foot I really like him. Available at 25 to 1 for the 2,000 guineas, 33s generally uh, for the Derby. I'm not suggesting you go in at uh, those prices, but I am suggesting that you keep a close eye on him going forward. I think he could be pretty useful, this fellow. And horses can quicken that sharply when there's a bit of ease in the ground, then they're good. All you've got to do then is find the right trip for them, and that's something that Charlie Appleby is adept at doing. In behind. Racing TV tracker horse, a Dublin lad, travelled strongly up against the rail, held up in last, on debut. You can see how high his head carriage is there. He doesn't quite know what to do when he's asked to pick up and go. He's got a nice pedigree. He does try and pick up to go and chase the winner, but that winner's not for running down when he's done an 11 second and 11.59 furlong. You're not going to catch him. But a Dublin lad does show a bit of speed to almost get to the winner's girth. And in the end, Ataj racing against the rail just runs him out of second place. But he did travel strongly through the race up against the rail. He made his move, made his ground smoothly. So I think a Dublin lad could go in your racing TV tracker, but I fancy that he'll never, ever beat that fella there in the winner's enclosure, who was very impressive to my eye, Imperial Emperor. And we may here on the verdict today have saved the best to last uh, with him. I'm very keen on him uh, going forward. Hope you enjoyed what we looked at uh, this week. We looked at loads of nice two-year-olds. Uh, we looked at the uh, sales race, the Ricker two-year-old uh, trophy. I thought it was a nice winner in a cold case. Lady Mojito, she's definitely a filly to keep an eye on. Don't think she won just because of the good rail. And uh, we saw a very good horse in the last race that we looked at there. Plus, of course, the Sun Chariot, where Fontaine put up uh, the performance of her career uh, to beat Laurel, who's going to be a really nice filly uh, next year. Lots to go out this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next week.